One of the things that is so interesting, saints, as we are getting into our new series, our new sermon, which is entitled, you may choose to say, my, my new chapter, or new chapter, but above all, it is important that we understand where, where God is placed into our lives. Ambulance it. But in, in our new series, new chapter, today I want us to focus into one area which is uh, called, uh, we'll be focusing today in decision making, which is what we'll also focus on, on, on our Bible study on, on Wednesday, the grace of decision making. Don't be the shadow of yourself. A shadow is a reflection of yourself, but it's not you. If your shadow, depending on the day or, or depending on the light that is reflecting, if your shadow shows you that you are small and shrink, that is not you, that is the shadow. If the shadow shows you being big and large, that's not you, that is the shadow. In in the process of decision making today, I would like to look into the characters of, of our sermons today. A man called Emikelek, em who was a husband and a father. He was a husband to uh, Naomi. And Naomi is also one of the key characters that we'll talk about in this time, whom he was a, a mother and a grandmother and a great, great grandmother. And he was a widower, of course. They are sons, Mal, Mahlon and, and Kilon. And they are daughters-in-law, which is Ruth and Oprah. He, we know that the Bible says he was from, from the tribe of Judah and he lived where in Bethlehem, underlined at Bethlehem, where was Christ born, underlined at Bethlehem. Who and one great man whom we, we know as a businessman or as a wealthy man whom is, was called Bohaz. Now part of our um, scripture for the year by now we should be knowing it by heart our scripture for the year i think i greeted everyone greet everyone decide and greet everyone decide greet everyone decide and also greet those who are watching us online thank you for partnering us thank you for commenting thank you for being with us all by all the time exodus chapter 4 verses 12 now go god is instructing now go, I will help you to speak and I will teach you what you ought to say. Sometimes as a man um, in this day, being the Father's Day, one of the hardest and the difficult things to do is taking a decision. Now, in taking a decision, you are considering how it is going to benefit you and how it is going to benefit others. And sometimes you rewind back and say, will this decision disadvantage me? That is why we normally say, um, don't take decisions on a temporary situation which you make them permanent unto you. But every process into our life, we all find ourselves making decisions decision to say yes it is cold but i wake up i go to shower i bath decision to say i'm going to do one two three four five decision that i'm going to work decision that i'm going to study decision is a process that you are showing commitment to your thoughts let me say it again decision is nothing else but it is a commitment to your thought now your thought can be committed in the right way or your thought can be committed in a wrong way now i mean Elimelech, who was, a, who was a husband and a father, find himself in a situation where he needs to take a decision. Now that you hear that there is a famine, famine, he thinks and says, will my family starve in my presence? Will my family suffer in my presence? Now, the Bible says in the later chapters that 
Boaz had to buy his land, his property. It means he was also owning land, property. He was a man of stature. He, he was a man who was in possession to say, if I live here, I am leaving everything. Also a decision to say, I need because to go to a country nearby. Not just a country, but a country which is called Moab. And a country which is known or associated to be the enemies of the children of Israel. Now do I leave the comfort of my place and go to a place which is also regarded as a place where these people are always fighting us. But now that we are having a famine here, where they are, now the Moabite, their land was characterized as an evergreen. It was a fertile place. Now sometimes Unkulunkulu or God can do things in a mystery place. That you say, but God, I am your child. I pray, I come to church, I fast, I give and I tithe. But my thing seems to be in a famine. But I look on the other side, it looks like um, they are prospering. Now when God speaks unto you and directs you, now he says, I'm a man, I'm a husband. Now my children, must they suffer? Now he decides by himself and say, I'm going to make a decision. And my decision, regardless whether the, the Moab are known as our attackers, I trust God that they shall not touch me, they shall not touch my family, I shall be able to move with my family, we shall settle, for we will not be able to starve. Now there are elements which causes or which brings in famine. One of it is, 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 is war, which is what we're experiencing in Russia and Ukraine. And what does war does? It brings the, the prices of food high. It makes food very, or oh, it brings the shortage of food. That's what we're experiencing now. But also, fair mind, there are, there are animals or insects or locusts that eats on, on, on plants, they can contribute to that. Sometimes where there is no rain, the land is just dry. Animals have nothing to drink. The land becomes dry and people are starving. That also bring in famine. Sometimes also when there is extreme cold, extreme cold where it is just snow throughout, but the people who are living in the North Pole, they have been able to adapt to say, how are they creating their vegetation so that they may be able to eat even if they live 90% of the year in snow. But in everything that the famine is bringing unto you, famine must not take away your capability to think. Famine must not take away your capability to can be able to make wise decision, even against all odds. Sometimes, what does that mean? Sometimes your help, your support, your assistance, you may not get from the people that you are with them. Your help you'll be getting from the people whom you regard as your enemy. Your help you'll get from the people whom you regard as, as those who are despising you. Your help will get from the people who are attacking you. Your help at times will get from the people who have been putting you down. But at the time when God says go to them and seek help, it is no longer about you. Yourself dies but the grace of God arises for he is the one who is directing you. And the decision at times that God guides you, they are not about you, they are not for you, but they are about the outcome of what God wants to achieve. I think is Isaiah 46 verses 10 that says God uh, um, starts things um, from the end or from his end we're able to see uh, the beginning. Now those of us who normally watch movies I normally say that the end of the movie, in most cases, is not the end of a movie, but is where the writer started. The writer does not start when you are having coffee, but the writer see the battle. The writer see the struggle and say, from this area, that is where then I'm going to move from, from the end going down and characterize my movie, my story, and build it up along the way. 
declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient times things that are not yet done saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Now this is what happens when we ought to make decisions. Your mind wrestles. You are the red one which is a, which is a minority. There are many thoughts that comes along you. So no, do this, do this, do this. Now all of those thoughts dominate you. But it is not about the thoughts that dominate you. But it's about what God instructs you, what God instills in you, what it is aligned to your discernment as you pray, as, as you are trusting God. Sometimes is not the majority thoughts that comes into effect about your life decisions. At times, it is also about unpopular decisions that you ought to take. That me, myself, me alone, and my house will serve the Lord, whilst other people are not. But it's an unpopular decision. Let, let's move on to the next picture. Now, many of us, we decision brings us to a crossroad. Do I go to the right or do I go to the left? It is a common cause. No one just wake up and say, Brr, I take decisions, then it just happens by that instantly, you know. Also, taking decisions, other people uh, will say, I do a finder, finder lot, I go to the scripture, I open my Bible, I page and page and page and say, whatever scripture is there, maybe that's what God instructing me to, to do. It might work, but not always. It might work, not always. Maybe you are fortunate, then you get a scripture which is directly aligned to the situation that you're facing. But in most cases is when the word of the Lord is spoken unto you, is preached unto you. And also making decision is also you being able to be in the presence of the Lord. That the word of the Lord must not depart away from you. God being able to be your guider. Now, we are always coming to a point and say, what must I do? Do I go right? Do I go left? Do I please people or do I please God? Do I please people or do I please God? Do I compromise my values or do I stand firm to my values? Do I want to fit in or I don't want to fit in? Decision is never an easy thing. Ultimately, you ought to decide. Sometimes your success or your breakthrough is not always in the straight path. Sometimes you ought to branch off. A, a tree does not grow to bear fruits that Islata always is standing tall. That's why you have branches. Sometimes there should be a diversion so that you may be able to move where God is leading and directing you to. Psalm, Psalm 32 verses 8 says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will counsel you who are willing to learn with my eye open to you. I will teach you. Now, it means that all decisions that you are taking, there is greater glory when we allow God to be part of, of them. That, Lord, I am coming to this point. Lord, I want to do this. Lord, I dedicate this, you know. And God will be able to, to manifest himself and, and give glory to everything that you are bringing. What will you do when you are faced with a famine, you are a father, you are a husband, that you ought to make a decision to say, I am going to go to the one that always attacks and undermines me. It is never easy, but it is necessary that we walk and listen to the discernment of the voice of the Lord. Because our eyes and our thinking are limited to see just into an enemy. But that is why Jesus, when he, he, he says to Peter, uh, you enemy or you, you, you devil, move off my way. But not that Peter 
was the enemy, was the devil, but it was the action that he was doing. But when it came to um, a person who, dis who, who betrayed Christ, who, who sold him, who told the soldiers and say, the one that I am going to kiss, the one that I'm going to hug, the one that I'm going to bring closer, every time the enemies bring come closer unto you they say the people who are going to destroy you the people who are going to let you down are those who are closer unto you are those who knows you are those who whom you have certain secret there's one politician i'm not sure how true is that she says all of us have have small yana, skeletons but in the kingdom of God, we're praying that we should not have small and skeletons. We should be striving each and every day to purify ourselves into the presence of the Lord. That the decisions that we're taking are decisions that are pleasing unto God. If I have wronged someone, I should be able to say, may you, Lord, forgive me that I have wronged my brother, I have wronged my sister. May you, Lord, allow me to walk in forgiveness into your grace. But in Christ, the one who betrays him, he says, friend, friend. It is strange, saints, eh? He says, friend, to the one who's betraying you. Never look into a place where you say, I know the solution, or I know where God is going to make provision for me. It is only in God that you must be established. And when you are established in God, all your thoughts and your thinking shall be able to glorify him. Because, yes, in the beginning, it did not make sense that, um, that um, Elimelech had to make a decision to go to a country which was, which was constantly attacking them, killing them, destroying them. What does that also teach us? It teaches us that we need to walk in a spirit of forgiveness, need to walk in a spirit of unity. Maybe some of the battles also that are happening, they are not yours. Just because um, your uncle of the uncle of the great-grandfather was not talking to your great-grandfather, now the siblings of the siblings are no longer talking to each other. Don't enter battles which are not yours. The battles between my mother and my uncles, they are not mine. Let them fight their battle as siblings, siblings' battles. I am just a child. I must be able to be there and, and, and pray for, for my parents and, and pray for my siblings and pray for my fellow brethren, brothers and, and sisters that we may be established in the Lord. Psalms 20 verse 6 says, I am certain the Lord that you will help your chosen king. You will answer my prayers from the holy place in heaven and you will save me with your mighty hand. Because part of us taking decision is trusting in God that God, it is you who is going to help me. It is you, God, who is going to enable me to bring victory. Now, the sad thing is he takes a decision to move his family, to say, I am moving my family to an unknown territory. He, maybe they pack up everything. He leaves his land. He leaves his field. They get to a place not even being long there. My word, the Bible says, he dies. He passes away. Now, the person who has taken a decision to relocate us, who was supposed to be the provider, lives, he dies. Now, Naomi is now a widow because the Bible says after that, his sons got married. He relocated to a place, never even had an opportunity to see his son getting married. Getting married to the people whom are regarded, the mobiles who are regarded as the enemies. Who? You don't have an enemy when you are a child of God. Ah, that's a miscoin. You don't have an enemy 
when you are a child of God. Aunaso is sita as a child of God. They get in into Moab, they settle, immediately he passes on, the children grow in, they get married, after 10 years, they die. That's what the Bible is saying. The sons after 10 years is now, they die. Now, Naomi is, is set in a place where now I have to take a decision. My husband took a decision that we must come in here. My sons took their own decisions that they are old, that they are going to marry here. I didn't oppose them because um, there's no one who has the greater strength to can be able to stop people when their hearts are so connected to each other. Naomi did not say, you cannot marry here because here yeah, these are the people whom are regarded as our enemies. But he allowed huh, his sons to get married there. And unfortunately his sons, the Bible says, after 10 years his sons died. Now Naomi is left alone. No children. No grandchildren is left with two daughters-in-law, Oprah and Ruth. And he, he says, my decision now, Habi took a decision because there was famine in, in Jerusalem, in Bethlehem, and for us to come here because everything was green. Now that I am getting the news to say, there's no longer famine. Everything is green on the other side. I am going back because I am a stranger here. Whilst it is comfortable, I have settled, I have a place, but I am going back. Then she speaks to the daughters-in-law and say, girls, it is a choice. You don't have to go with me. Stay because you are young so that you might, you might still be able to find a um, charming guy's husband who will be able to, to love you and help you to bear children. Me, I am just an old person, but the only thing that I can do, I appreciate you. She blesses them. Each and every one of us, when God has placed to you greater destiny, the decision at times that we take, they seem um, uncommon, they seem ununderstandable, they seem not to be most popular with everyone. She goes back home, but Ruth decides to go back with her. What was Ruth choosing to go with her? Because from the beginning, God had a greater plan. I'm going to reveal that. Now, Oprah chooses to stay, but Ruth chooses to go with her to, to a foreign country, leaving all his relatives, leaving all friends and people that she knows. Sometimes your greater success and glory and increase is found when you move out of your comfort zone, is found when you're trusting God and walking into a known destination to an unknown destination because it is where it is an unknown destination that God is going to reveal himself. Where does God reveal himself? Maybe fast forward. But it is in Christ that we are able to say we are standing true for somebody trusted and believed that I should move in from a country, from a place which was regarded to be a place where it was the enemy of the Israel in Bethlehem. Now I am a stranger, me Ruth, but I'm going to move forth into a place of an unknown. Least did he know, did she know that at the end God has established and set her up with it. she is going to be in the lineage of the high hierarchy that it is through that lineage that um, through her and actually Boaz. Boaz what? Does it do? Boaz identifies her, not just identify her, finds favor in her. Not only find favor in her, but Boaz um, marries Ruth. Just fast forward, go back. And marries Ruth. Ruth bears in a son by the name of Obed. From Obed comes in who? Jesse. Who was Jesse? Jesse is the father of who? Of David. 
And the Bible tells us that it is true in David um, that the lineage or the hierarchy of Christ comes from. Now, Usuga, you are moving from the place that is comfortable for you. Gulunkulu has a greater purpose. That is why we say always descend. Don't trust in your instinct. Trust in what God is giving unto you. Now be a Ruth. Now you are moving from a place that you are comfortable with. You are leaving your relatives, your friends, everybody that you know. You are going with an old woman. To a place that is, is unknown. And they get into, into Bethlehem. Worse is that they have nothing. They have no food. Yes, there is a place to stay. They have no food. But Ruth says, allow me to go and find food. But her ways of finding food is not common like most, most of us will do. Most of us, people will either go house to house and back. Either some will stand in the street with the pot justifying the reason that you need to be assisted. But she says, the Bible uses the word clean. Clean. Cleaning. Cleaning is, is nothing else but is to pick up from the ground. Let me put it in Zulu. Ugutopa is to pick up from the crowd. Now, never despise the small beginning that God sets you in. Where you are doppering, where you are picking up, where people say, look at her, how beautiful she is, but look at her, she is busy picking up from the remains. She is busy picking up from what we think we consider not usable. She is picking up from what we do not want because the servants of Boaz were picking up the best and whatever was not the best, they were leaving it behind. But God had a greater plan to ensure that she, she is trusted, she become faithful. Unkulunkulu says, I'm gonna use you to show that you must trust in me and believe in me. She goes and pick up. Christ, what is the symbol of that? We are all picked up by Christ. We are all picked up by Christ in our mess, in our situations. We are all picked up by trust where we had no hope. We are all picked up by trust where everything was lost. We are all picked up by trust and by Christ and moved from the place where we had nothing, from the place of sin, from the place of, of darkness to be put into a place of light. Christ speak us up. Ustopile from our sins and chose us and, and cleaned us and, and made us to be the better people that we are today, that we are standing firm and strong and say, no enemy shall be able to bring us down for the one that is in me is greater than any other person that we are trusting and believing that as I walk with you, God, let them speak, let them do anything, but by forgiveness I shall walk and I trust and believe in you. In your light, I know that I shall be able to, to receive greater redemption and receive greater glory and understanding of where you are, where you are taking me, God. Who? The principles or the biblical principles of making decision as we close. The question that I always get as a pastor, Marim Fundisi Ntandazil, I have prayed Nothing seems to come to forth. Do you think maybe there's anything wrong with me? Nothing is wrong with you. Nothing is wrong with you. Let me say that. Nothing is wrong with you. But your answer is coming. Continue picking up. But time is coming where you are picking up. You are going to be the owner of that field. You are going to be the, the, the employer of those who are, who are busy saying to you, Dopa. Maybe I imagine they were playing with her, teasing her, um, saying, Tata, Dopa, Tata, Dopa. But because she was determined, she was not bothered by that. And when you are in your right position, forget about the elevation of other people. God will be able to pick you up from where you are. Now, Boaz comes. He has all the servants who are working there. 
in a theological framework, there are many people who are working, but the instruction has always been pick up the best and anything that you think is not best, leave it there. But now Boaz is, is amazed. He is thinking is a servant. Who is that woman or servant who, who is picking up or who is cleaning? When you are in your position, you are standing, you are trusting God, you shall be noticed by God. The spotlight shall be in you. The spotlight will be able to elevate you out of the darkness that you find yourself in. Trust in God and believe in God. Never walk in the shadow of yourself, but walk in the presence of God because the presence of God will spotlight you and highlight you and it is through the presence of God that you shall increase, that you shall be established. Your decision reflects your values. Think of every decision as a representative of yourself. That I shall not do one, two, three, four, five because I don't, I don't want to drink because if I drink, I will have poor face. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do certain elements which the Bible says uh, um, are incorrect, are sins. I don't want to involve myself in that. I don't want to sleep with boys. I don't want to sleep with girls. I don't want to uh, steal. I don't want to take what is not mine. I don't want to lie. It's a reflection of yourself. If I want to be pure in God, my decision must, your decision reflects who you are. It's a choice. The Bible says you have choice. Choose good or do good or do evil. It's a choice. Decision is a choice. But the choice that you're making, God is always with you. The former British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher said, in terms of making a decision, standing in the middle of the road is very dangerous. You'll be knocked down by cars on both sides. Never be in a fence. Never be indecisive. Never be, uh, find yourself always in a position of procrastinating. Never be in a position of doubt. Never be in a position of not trusting in God. Every decision that you take, bring it into, into the Lord. God will guide the process of your decision making. God gives us the choice and the free will to live our lives. And the choice is freedom to decide. And sometimes that's why they say freedom might be costly. Point. The reality, in reality, our deep-seated values and conviction determine how we will make our decisions. In Romans 6, 21 says, what did you gain from, from doing the things that you are now ashamed of? The things that you are ashamed of. Then it says, the results of those things is death. Every decision area, make decisions that will bring life unto you, not decisions that will lead you into death. Take decisions. It's never an easy thing, but when God is with you, decision enables you to be separated. Emilalek had to take a decision and separate himself and go to a foreign country a country where people were the enemies of, 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 of Judah. Naomi had to take the decisions to go back and to reclaim what was left of her. But at the end, it was not about Elimelech going to Moab. It was about God's plan to say there's a woman in a foreign country, a country that is regarded to be the enemy of my people, but there's a woman that I have raised there. There's a young girl that I'm raising there who's going to be the seed bearing for my, for my child, for my redeemer. It is through her that I see in that the world will be redeemed. It is through her that I see that there shall be reconciliation. It is through Ruth that I see that she shall be able to come to a position of being the great, great grandmother. 
Now, in, 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 in Ruth, her action shows that she trusted and believed in God. May I encourage you as, as we close, that trust in God, that sometimes taking decision is for you to move out in your comfortability and say, Lord, I know that I'm used to doing things this way, but Lord, you are taking me to an unfamiliar territory. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go in into this work environment and I shall rise up. I'm going to go in into this career and I shall be able to dominate and I shall go in into this environment and I shall be able to take position and be in control. It is in me, O oh Lord, that you trusted me, that I, Ruth, I shall be the owner of this field, but you wanted me to be faithful. Ruth, I must come in and clean and pick up the pieces. Nothing in God is a waste. Nothing in God must be taken and be thrown away. Every human being, every person in God is useful, has a purpose, has greater plan that has placed into your life. Never undermine the position that you are. That from cleaning, you shall own that place. You shall own that territory. You shall be able to rise above your current circumstances. You shall be able to stand in, in the position where you say, Lord, look where I come from. It was not like this before, but you have placed me into the pedestal that I am an owner. Now as an owner, I know how it is to, um, to clean lean to top to pick up therefore I shall not waste whatever favor that I found in Bohaz because Bohaz says leave Ruth to clean as much as she can I'm going to return the same favor the favor that is that is given unto you who return it to other people let's close Jesus, let's close, let's leave it there. Because if I continue, I close with this characterization of the risk decisions. I risk, but the, the risk, the first letter is the responsibility, the sense, the need to step out. The I is the initiative. Act even when no one else goes there. In risk, the S stands for sacrifice. There are certain things that you sacrifice that is okay for me. Uh, that in the little that is home, that is left at home, I'm going to share with my husband and my children. And sometimes the same children and the same husband don't appreciate. They come in when, as a mother, you have cooked, you have not eaten. Your husband comes in, there's only two pieces left. You say, this is for you. Then he comes and says, but I'm an At that time, you've never eaten, you've made a sacrifice. Making a sacrifice is never easy. In fact, when you make a sacrifice, you... You, you even get sacrificed more. You have made a sacrifice, people stamp on you, stamp on you. Then you, then you ask yourself, my time is up. You ask yourself and say, but why did I even have to make this sacrifice? Oh God, was it necessary if I shouldn't have just moved on with my life and ate this food and not consider them? But God is looking at your sacrifice. The K as we stand, knowledge, every risk, every risk, worship team, every risk possesses enough information to trust in the decisions of God. Who? In your decision making process, know God's voice, let us stand. Know the voice of God. How audible it is. Prayer is an exchange of your pardon with God. Who? It's fine, you'll get it into your notes. But these are the three things that you need to fight on in decision making. Also, stay true to what God is saying. There's three voices in making decision. One is the voice of God. Always ensure that the voice of God is audible enough. How is the voice of God audible? I must meditate on the word, read on the word. 
pray. When we say we are praying on, on Mondays, pray. Our Mondays prayer also are becoming popular outside CBC report because we share also with people outside. Some even remind me, even Mondays in the morning, and say, you have not sent me the prayers. Pray and stay true to the voice of God. Secondly, your voice. Be sure that your voice is aligned to the will of God when you make decisions. Because it is easy that your voice might be, pu might be propelled or pushed by your carnality. What is carnality is fleshly thinking and, flesh and fleshly desires. Lastly, the devil always speaks. He wants to influence your decisions. No, it's correct. No, this one is fine. No, this one, you are not going to be harmed. Let's pray to say, may God grant us the grace of being wise people. People are able to take decisions that are going to amplify our lives. People are able to take decisions who, who I said, decisions are a reflection of you. Therefore, whatever decision I take, they, sh they should reflect in me. Hence, I always say, please don't defend me outside if you hear rumors because you don't know what I've done. Because my decisions, maybe I've taken incorrect decisions. Therefore, they are coming back to haunt me because there is no secret or anything hidden under God. Allow me or allow any other person um, I, I, I think one time I demonstrated how not to save somebody who's drowning. If you want to jump to the pool, even if you're the greatest swimmer, if the person is sitting water, you will drown with him or her. Let the people hit water until they hit it no more. Then when they are calm, then you can then go in. They are, they, they, they are not going to um, drown but they lose strength, they lose the, the power that is on them. When that power, when that force is no longer with them, then you can go in and take a decision and be in control. And when, whenever the enemy is not in control, God therefore is easy to be in control in our moment.